Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I never got around to making the other part of the video that I said I would yesterday because I was in too much of a hurry to get out to my dance night. Uh, and I thought that the light right now is so beautiful here. The sun is shining and finally the temperature has r risen a little bit. It's been really cold here for a while. Like last night when I drove home, it was minus 14 degrees Celsius. And we don't have that kind of weather that much in Sweden anymore, like in, in the Stockholm area where I'm from. Um, I mean, when I was a kid, we used to have these like, really cold winters and it was like often like between like minus 20 and minus 30 Celsius. I mean, I did experience that like every winter. And I think with climate change, it's become like more mild. So this is really unusual. Anyway, we're looking at some, um, it's, it's going to be melting. The snow is going to be melting in a few days. So the weather's really up and down. Um, and I think I, 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 this is my impression kind of all over the world that the weather, people don't recognize the, the weather and their climate. <laughs> it's like really changing all over. Anyway, <clears throat> these, this little box has like the ones that I've decided to keep. And thank you so much for commenting on yesterday's video because I decided to actually keep a few fragrances that I might have whizzed past a little quickly. Um, I'm keeping Melancholia uh, because somebody said that this one really does well in the heat. And it's kind of like a mint lemongrass, or this person said, one of you said to me that it's a really beautiful, like grassy kind of fragrance and that it might do better in the heat. So I'm going to revisit that when, when summer comes. So I'll be keeping that. And also Songs from Gotal, which is like the super floral, naturalistic, um, beautiful fragrance that I didn't think I'd reach for because it's not my thing. But um, I know also I have a friend who really loves that and... I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna hold on to those drops too, uh, just because uh, one of you guys recommended it. So that was you, Julia, wasn't wasn't it? Anyway, thank you for that. I love the feedback, and I do have a tendency to sometimes judge too quickly when I have too much, and I don't really have the stress to get through this. But I think it has to do with me starting a new job, and I kind of want to. I don't. I never want to have a shoebox of samples. That that the feeling of that just kind of stresses me out, and I'd rather. Even if I like a fragrance, if I made up my mind like I like it, I love it, um, maybe I'll look for a bottle, but like the samples are more for sampling. And then sometimes I'll actually put some of these I'm going to be putting into my collection and considering it like one of my fragrances to, to wear and then maybe, you know, get a, a bottle if I find one at a good price. But um, I'll start with this. This one is from a brand uh, that I have a negative... Um, like I have a negative picture of this brand and therefore I'm kind of like I'm already on a minus level like when I'm trying it. I find that interesting like how the, the brand or the perfumer can put me like in a, in a special like um, like already I'm biased even before I've opened the top. But this is from Montal and it's called White Aoud. Aoud sometimes is spelled with an A, you know. This one is spelled with an A. A-O-U-D. But this one kind of intrigued me. I mean I like, I like Ouds in general. This one gets compared to Oud Satin Mood, but this one I think has more Oud and less vanilla. I mean, it's kind of a rose saffron. Let's see what else it has. Cardamom, lab denim. It's a little ambery. I like it, and I'll, and I'll definitely wear this. I, I really like white Oud. And this, this even though I don't typically like Montal and Mancera, uh, their, their fragrances I think I find are a little like loud and rough and um, maybe a little sweet for me little synthetic perhaps like sugary I find them a lot very sugary but this one I like this one and then there are two from a brand called um, that I'm a little bit acquainted with I, I, I visited this brand when I went to fragrance and art last summer this little shop up north in Sweden um, where I go every year now it's a tradition and this is the, the brand is Parfum de Empire these are original samples I think one of these is called Equistrius and the other one is called uh, Trois Fleurs, Three Flowers. And these, um, I really like both of these. And I tried them, I tried them side by side for the only, only for the reason that they're both in the same house. They're completely different. Um, but one of them is, uh, Equestrius gets compared to Dime Blonde by just a few, just a few. Because um, it has a suede note, but it's also like, it's iris and violet and it has chocolate and rice suede and brett i mean this this is really like up my alley kind of notes and it gives me a little bit of a hay vibe which makes me a little hesitant but i'm definitely gonna hold on to that milliliter that i have left and the same with trois fleurs which is like a beautiful i don't have much of it even to pass on but it has like 
tuberose, iris, jasmine, um, let's see, yeah, it has galbanum, and I think that's why I like it. I like when, I like tuberoses when they throw in something green and bitter, like it, it doesn't go completely sweet. It also has mint and ylang ylang, so mint can work sometimes. These two I'm looking forward to wearing, and I think the, the floral one, Trois Fleurs, I think it's going to be better in the summer. Um, Oriana, maybe it doesn't even need a description. This is from Parfums de Marley. This is the marshmallow type fragrance I decided to keep. Uh, this one, um, this one is a little bit like Rouge Malakite. It's a little bit like Sintra from Memo. And it's a little bit like Love Don't Be Shy from By Killian, which I do have a little mini of and I never wear. I even gave away like half of the juice I had because I so rarely wear it. And I think I might end up there with this one too. Like not very often do I feel like smelling like a marshmallow, orange blossom, um, sweet, candy-ish kind of... It, this just, just isn't what I reach for that often. But I wanted to give it a proper wear because I haven't yet. That's Oriana from PDM. Um, then I have Crise de Lancome, which I've tried before. This is a discontinued, really nice, leathery fragrance from, from Lancome. You can't get hold of it anymore. But I heard Ramsey say that it is not that hard to get a hold of, and it's not that expensive when you find secondhand bottles, I think he said. Uh, really love this. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful, uh, kind of floral, leathery... It might be considered a sheep, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think it's one of those that has, like loads of notes listed and it's not super it's super heavy leather the leather is just kind of mixed in there with lots of other really nice notes I, I like it a lot that's really really pretty and that I will keep and cherish those drops uh okay this one I was surprised that I'm going to keep this is from L'Atelier Parfum and it's called Tobacco Volute so usually when a perfume says it has tobacco I usually don't even don't even try it but now since it was in this box uh, I decided to try it, and I really like this one. It's maybe a tad sweet. It's a little boozy, but it reminds me a little bit of Blanche Bet. Um, and I've decided I'd, I'd like to do a side by side between the two of them. It has like it has bitter almond, wheat, and bran in the top. So I guess it's kind of bready. Tobacco, hay, and mate. So I mean, this is like the hay component that I don't know if this will work in the long run, but it, it's not really like difficult this fragrance. Vanilla Tonka, Leatrix, I'm not quite sure of that note, but I'm just going to I'm just going to spray it just right now just to kind of remember what it smells like. Um, I mean, I think I kind of waited for the dry down and I also noted the price here. Let's see. The price wasn't that bad and they come in, in these 15 milliliter bottles for $5.99. I mean, five hundred five. Okay, 600 Swedish crowns, which would be like roughly, um, how many, that would be like $60 or 60 euros. I mean, roughly. Now I know that the, yeah, just take this with a grain of salt. It's, I mean, I like that they have that price and you could even get them at like special discount sites, even cheaper. And like for 100 mil, it would be like $150 or something like that. I don't know. I think maybe the bitter almond note makes it a little interesting. It's not a straight up gourmand anyway, but it's a tobacco that I really want, I want to revisit for sure. So I decided to keep it. That's tobacco volute. Um, then I have extra noir and I'm, um, this is from Elisir and I really like this house. I was really hooked on a fragrance from that house. Like maybe it was it about a year ago, six months ago called desired. And I talked about it on this channel over and over again. I was about to get a bottle. I decided not to, it's quite pricey. This one is from that house and this one has, a, it shares that DNA with Desired. This one is a little more, I think, noir, <laughs> dark. Um, let me see what I wrote about it because um, it was one of those, like I was a little on the fence, should I keep it, should I not? Because it, oh, it has a pretty strong leather vibe. Um, let's see. It has a leather vibe. I don't see it has leather listed here, but maybe it's the labdanum. I mean, labdanum is, is really kind of smoky and leathery, it can be. It has some some um, some herbal notes, lavender, geranium, um, benzo, castorium, woody notes. But I definitely felt that it had something in common with Desired, so I thought since I really liked that, I really want to give this some more time. So I'm looking forward to that. Then I got... Uh, a new Neroli Oak Renoir from Guerlain. I love these samples. I think they're so beautiful. 
this is not, this is the tea note, I was the tea fragrance I was talking about that I'm actually going to keep. So this is a neroli and tea scent. And I like the bitter tea in there. I think this might have some floral notes too, like maybe jasmine, maybe orange blossom with a neroli. This is really fresh. And I know, I know this guy that loves this fragrance. I think that does affect me a little bit. Like I sometimes want to wear it, like and think of him. He's, he's the one I've been talking about sometimes as he's been kind of an informal mentor to me. Uh, he's a very rich man and he likes, he loves neroli. He really loves neroli. Um, I'm the one, he's Middle Eastern and, and I'm Swedish and, and in Sweden people tend to like kind of really fresh light fragrances if they use fragrance at all. And he's like from the Middle East where people tend to, to use more like heavy fragrances and he, and he likes all this like light stuff. He loves Neroli's and this is one of his favorite fragrances. He has a liter bottle of this, like one liter with his name engraved on it. That's how much he likes it. But I do like that fragrance uh, if I'm in the mood. Uh, then there's one from Molinard which is a pretty good, it's, it's a house that sells at a good price point, I think. I had used to have an amber from there that I really, really enjoyed, and then I kind of grew out of it, and I got kind of, I, I, I had ambers that I preferred. <clears throat> I think that one was called Amber Lumiere. This one is called Fig, uh, and it's a fig fragrance, which I don't, I don't gravitate towards fig, but I do like it sometimes, and this one is, um, it's really fresh fig. I think this will be great for summer. I want to go back and, and visit it again. Then, this was kind of like a reacquaintance for me. It's called Flashback, and it's from Olfactive Studio. And uh, I, I have had a bottle of this, I remembered. I bought it like a, it was like a tester bottle, and I got it for like nothing. And I really liked it. It's just like it's not my style of fragrance, but I am going to keep this because... I'm gonna have a perfume testing. Uh, it's actually like customers, they're, they're paying me to have like a perfume testing with me on February 17th. And I'd like to show them this because it's an example of really well done citrus. Um, it is so beautiful, the citruses in this book, uh, one called Flashback. Um, and there's also one called Flashback in New York, like a sister fragrance that's nothing like it to me. This is, I don't even know why they've like, you would think that it would be like, the same, although they maybe added ginger or something, but it's completely different. And this one I don't like at all. This one should have been in the one that I'm passing on. I can tell you briefly about that in a minute, but this flashback is, it's such a nice like morning fragrance and it has like orange, I think it has mint. Let me see what it, what it has. It's, it was created by Olivier Cresp in 2013 and it has rhubarb, grapefruit and orange. And I don't like normally grapefruit in fragrances. I don't know why. I like to eat it. I just don't like it in fragrance. But here, it also has Granny Smith apple, pink pepper, vetiver, cedar, musk, and amber. It's it described as a vetiver fragrance. But to me, I mean, I like vetiver. But here, to me, the citruses are what stands out. And I remember this from, I worked in a shop that carried this brand. And I remember, like, showing the customers, like, if they were into citrus, I would always show them a uh, flashback. I think there was also some more fragrances from there that I really... It's just so refreshing. And I used to have a fragrance called Still Life in Rio that, that was also had a really beautiful kind of top. I don't know if there were citruses, but that one also had like, um, it has a little bit of a coconut vibe. That, that's a beautiful fragrance too, but I just ended up never wearing it. And my, my niece really liked it, so I gave it to her. This is really nice. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's I, I find it unisex, although it's very vetiver-y kind of scent, but I will be keeping that because mostly because I want to show these these people coming for the perfume testing. I also find a beautiful citrus uh, is like Cedro de Diamante from Paris Monte Carlo and their one with orange, Arancia de Sicilia is really beautiful citrus. There are some citrus fragrances that I really, really don't like. Like I don't like the citruses from MFK, like the Universalis Forte and um, aqua, blah, blah, blah. I just don't, I don't know. And then there's some from Zerzhov that I think are really, really bad. Like there's something screechy, something kind of very unpleasant about the, the way they do citrus. So I'm really sensitive to that. Okay. Then I've decided to also keep all of the fragrances from Orme. They were not in that package. These, uh, these came from somebody else. Someone sent me these actually also for free. Um, and I, I love this brand. I, I'm, I'm kind of hooked on this brand, but I'm keeping Livre Bleu. I just have a little squirt left. And there, there's something plasticky about this fragrance. 
but it is a beautiful gourmand once it once it settles down like the dry down is really pretty i think it has like i found a little bit similar to cacao porcelana that i already have but i'm, I'm going to be enjoying these last drops i love this fragrance i could see myself getting a bottle even though it does have a little bit of a surprisingly because they only use naturals that this i find it a little bit plasticky right in the opening livre bleu then I have the 28 degrees, which is kind of a, a floral freshy. Um, it's just really nice. I'm, I'm definitely going to just finish all these. I, I, I love the, the only one I, I kind of passed on of them all. I didn't have the whole line, but I didn't have like um, the, the Oud one. Um, don't know what that's called even. And I did, didn't have, there was one more I didn't have in, in this collection. There was, there was a discovery set of seven. I'm also keeping and enjoying toi, 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 or toy, toy, toy. I can't remember how to pronounce this. It's an expression, uh, meaning you like you spit over your shoulder three times uh, to like to not have bad luck, I think, or something. But this is a beautiful incense vanilla fragrance with some. Um, I mean, I think there's some some tough notes in here for me in the beginning, um, but it dries down so beautifully. Uh, let's see. I wore this. Oh, what did I write about this one? I, I, I've worn this a few times. I got a compliment for it last time I wore it. it it's kind of like, the, it's not loud enough to like notice it if you're just kind of walking by me. But like if I, you know, I gave somebody a hug and she's like, oh boy, you smell good. A friend of mine. And she's all into fragrance too, this person. Um, no, I can't find it. But it reminds me just a little bit of it. A little bit of um, Sideris from Mar Maria Candida Gentile. That one has maybe a little more vanilla. This is a little bit more masculine leaning, perhaps. But it's, she thought it was, this person said she thought it was very vanillic on me. But it has a nice incense note, just the right amount. Um, this I could see myself going full bottle. And with full bottle, I mean 20 milliliters. The little bottles. I love those little bottles. I wouldn't buy 100, because I'll never use 100 of anything, it feels like now, because my collection is, is so big. And it's still not super big. It's like, I have like 53 bottles or something. Um, and then, but then I don't count the ones under 30. So I'm, I'm fooling myself a little bit. I have some like four or five travel size from Perfume Aroma. Those are like 18. I have some, you know, I've got some 10 milliliter. Yeah, I have much more than the 53. Every day I'm facing 100 fragrances to choose between if I count my decants and samples, at least. Okay, and then there's Yvonne, which is a nice, really beautiful fragrance that reminds me kind of of the typical structure of a designer fragrance that you find at the tax-free but this is much much nicer so those I'm keeping for sure then yesterday I wore uh, to dancing actually uh, Tokad and this is from Rochas it's kind of an old fragrance I don't think it, I'm not sure they sell it anymore but it gets compared to woman in gold and I'll have to say it's really really similar not identical but like as soon as you sniff the top you're like oh this is familiar and I really like Woman in Gold, and I this I find like a people pleaser. And sure enough, I got a compliment for it yesterday. Tokad, I don't have much left to pass on anyway, but I will enjoy those drops. Then there's Oud Superfluide, which is a really nice Oud from Les Eaux Primordiales. Uh, we'll definitely be using that up. Um, Isra and Mirai from Stefan Humbert Lucas 777. I think this was my favorite out of all the fragrances that came in this um, big box. But it was really familiar and I, I, I realized it reminds me of Musk Ravageur uh, very, very much. Um, almost to the point like I would not be able to tell them apart. So I will be enjoying that much. And it's not like a cheaper version of it. It's like they're both of these fragrances are these houses have a, are at a very expensive price point. So, um, I mean, I like their fragrances. Um, I just find them to be a little bit overpriced. I love the bottles as well. Much better bottles than Frederick Mall. Anyway, that's for sure. Isra and Mirai. I guess they're two names. Super, super beautiful, uh, musky, um, kind of semi-gourmand leaning. I'm not sure this one has lavender. This one might have something else in there. Wait, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about it in a minute. Wait, I have made some notes. I've tried a lot of fragrances in the last few days. Or in the last, oh, over Christmas, I would say. I've been working at this. Um, let me see. <laughs> Damn good, I've written. No, it reminds me a little bit of the Shalimars, like of Shalimars. Uh, I'm thinking like Shalimar EDT, like old Shalimar. 
I mean, there's some cinnamon in here. There's heliotrope and osmanthus. Uh, it has some ambergris. There's no lavender like in, in most gravageur, but it's really pretty. It had this one has oud and leather, but it's not heavy at all. It's just it's just perfect. It's such a perfect fragrance. Really, really love these right in the rhyme. Let's see what else. Uh, Sun Goddess actually came from Clara, my friend. I the first time I wore this at her house, I absolutely loved it. Second time I wore it, I loved it. Third time, I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and then I think maybe, you know, maybe there's just, it demands a little sunshine, so I'm holding on to this. It's kind of a beachy, tropical, floral fragrance. Gives me a vibe of coconut, although it has no coconut listing, uh, listed. And it's from the brand Musicology. And I think it was created by, if I'm not mistaken, Natalie Lorson, maybe. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep that because I, I know how much I loved it the first time I tried it at her house. Then there are only two more here. Uh, Cuir Velour uh, from uh, Naomi Goodzier Perfumes. This is kind of a leathery, fruity, floral, I think, fragrance. Not my typical style, but I decided to, let's see. Oh, it's, ma it's made from, by Julian Raskinet, who's made like a bunch of fragrances from, for Navitas. He's made Enclay for Amouage, like five different ones for Juice Box, which is a brand I have never really tried. Um, but he's, I mean, I consider him a master perfumer. I hear a lot of people talking about him. And he wrote something really nice. Um, I, I picked this up somewhere on some site. He said, the aim of a creation is to cause emotion. And I really like that. And I find that with perfumery, that's really important. It, it, if it's just beautiful, and that's the why I was a little bit hesitant to keep that one called Songs from Gotal because it didn't stir up emotion except that I said, oh, this is really, really pretty, but like, I'm not excited about it. But this one I was a little excited about. Um, this, the first thing I thought of was like, it's, this is really high quality. This is kind of an old fragrance. It came out in 2012. And Cuir Velour, Cuir means leather, so like velour kind of soft leathers, sort of. I would sort of translate that. It's boozy, sweet, slightly leathery, dark, fruity, just a speck, but not soft and not too loud. Um, and it has suede, so it's not like a heavy. I find with suede is more like a soft leather. It doesn't have that kind of sour. Sometimes it almost like heavy leather, like Interlude Man, you know, it flips over and becomes almost like sour, like you put your nose into like an old leather black jacket, you know, by worn by someone who's been riding a motorcycle. It's kind of aged and it has a really kind of dense smell. That's not this. And this has Immortel, rum, tobacco, incense, and labdenum. So you would think that it would lean quite masculine, but I don't find that it does. It's um, completely unisex. I, it intrigues me. I want to wear it again for sure. Then another really beautiful one where I only have a tiny drop left now, so not much to pass on, but maybe enough for someone to at least try it. This is by Tower, and it's called Incense Rosé. Not Incense Rose, Incense Rosé, so like pink incense. It does have a little note of rose, but not too much. Um, this one I thought was really super beautiful. It's an older fragrance. It came out in 2008. Um, let's see. Rose, Clementine, Cardamom, and Bergamot in the top. Castorium and Oris in the mid, and then it has all these resins and incense, labdanum, patchouli, vetiver in the base. It's, it's really, really soft and beautiful and not so rosy. So this was like a, I wouldn't say, maybe not love, but super light. I was like, this is really beautiful. And I felt it at like first sniff. Um, then there were a few, I think, that I just, you know, I took out, I took out of the box and I just put them straight into my collection because I like, I know I like them. I know the fragrances so well. And I think one of them was, uh, let's see, one of them was Amabile. And Amabile is from Zerjoff, and it comes in those bottles with like a velvety kind of, um, it's like a yellowish green bottle. These, this is an expensive fragrance. It's, it's fruity. It has, I think, green apple, maybe in some other fruits. It has something, oh, it's my son playing music. I, I have to round this off. Anyway, that's... Um, it's a really, really beautiful fragrance, and I love to wear it in the summer, and I've been to like been through like two samples of it, but it's so expensive, and I only like wear it in the spring and summer. But I'm so happy to have the sample, so thank you so much. Um, you know who you are, who sent this to me. Uh, and then I'm also keeping um, Bouquet Encore from L'Orchester Parfum. I just, I don't know, I think I put it straight into my collection because I felt that it was a very beautiful floral 
that I want to go back to. Uh, the first time I tried it, I'm like, this is boring. This is sweet and generic and designery. Second time I wore it, um, I found this is beautiful, maybe slightly basic, but a good, easy reach that would suit anyone, at least women. Um, and I like that Two Bros is just a part of the mix and doesn't take over the whole fragrance. And I think maybe this will be like perfect for the office. Um, so I want to keep wearing it a little bit. But there's vanilla in the base, and that kind of makes the Two Bros and Jasmine, you know, more digestible and easier for me to take. So I decided I'm keeping that, at least for a while. Um, I, I put it kind of in the same category as my Honor Woman from Amelage. Um, yeah, that was Bouquet Encore from L'Orchestre Parfum. It has quite a good rating on Fragrantica, 4.19. I think it's a really easy fragrance to like. And I find that about that house in general. Oh, I wanted to tell you what one more. I passed on because I wanted my friend to be able to try it. I actually made like a package of a bunch of fragrances. Either I didn't want to spend time with, with them or I already have spent time with them and I kind of know what I think. But Jasmine Noir from Splendida Bulgari is kind of a cheapie, um, which I found to be, it has like, a, like an almond note and I found it to be like a beautiful uh, sort of gourmand leaning fragrance with like gardenia, um, yeah, it, it, it did have almond, uh, patchouli, cashmere wood. It was really, really pretty. Performance wasn't great, but like if you see that one and it's really cheap, I would say that this is a really good blind buy. Um, the, but performance, I also read something on For Granted Get. Several people were complaining about the performance. And I think that Jasmine Noir comes like in another version, like a, from their more expensive line, um, which has a different price. And then maybe that one has better performance. I don't know. I was surprised because the name Jasmine Noir, you wouldn't think that that's a fragrance that would lean gourmand. But this one, it had that almond kind of creamy, um, let's see, plant notes. Yeah, there were different, there were, this one had different notes. Like if I looked at Fragrant Gaff, I looked at the website. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure of the notes, but there's Tonka in there. It's, it's a really, really nice, easy wear. Okay, I'm just going to see if there's one that I've missed here. I think I've talked about all of these. I, oh, I did try, this was the one from Quentin Biche. This one I also passed on. Veninum Kiss from Ex Nihilo. This was a really nice fragrance, but a little bit too much rose. Um created in 2015 because he makes a lot of like odd fragrances and uses this Akigala wood too much but this was really nice um and, and was really natural smelling and I think maybe because Ex Nihilo is a brand with that uses a lot of natural ingredients so I think that that's maybe why so I mean Quentin Beach I bet is a really good perfumer if he gets you know free hands he might do some weird stuff and then he can also do like really good basic perfumes uh Veninum Kiss was really nice I'll have to say or I think that maybe that was the one that I used up. I might have used it up because there wasn't much in it or I passed it on. I can't remember. But I'm at least making sure that all of these fragrances are going to other to new owners. They're, they're going to be used up to the last drop. At least I'm not going to just let them lay around because that's just not my thing. Um, yeah, and there was also uh, like a half a decant of musk therapy from Inicio, which I did try one night on one arm while I was watching TV. And I just didn't think it was so special. Let's see, it was a white musk, black currant. I wrote that it's similar to the lighter f fragrances from Byredo, kind of like Majava Ghost, Balda Freak, um, Gypsy Water, you know, these kind of fragrances. They don't, they just don't interest me that much. So I passed that on. And I think that this person who's like a not, you know, she's not a frag head, she'll really like it. I think it's a real easy wear. And then uh, my friend Leon, I got I got I had just like a drop left of Iris Ganache from Guerlain and I know she loves it and she only has it's discontinued I think it's kind of like a white chocolate I don't really get white chocolate from it but it's a really nice kind of candyish leaning iris um I said I almost got a little melon in the opening it's sweet to me in a weird way a lot of violet to me but no violet listed so that's Iris Ganache very high ratings on Fragrantica, 4.33. So this came out in 2007. So it was created by Thierry Wasser. Um, I don't know. I just, I didn't feel like I was going to wear that. Um, and then there was a number three from SG79 Stockholm. Maybe I talked about that one already. That's a Swedish brand. It's kind of a, a green apple kind of fragrance. Let's see. Yeah, I, I just, it, it, that was also a, tea, a green tea fragrance. I, I just didn't, you know, I just didn't really love it. So 
Um, there are a few more that I have not. I think I probably have like 10 or 15 fragrances left to try. I haven't tried them. Um, I have a new decant of Scarlet Poppy from Jo Malone Intense. I've tried that a few times in the store and I've really like, and I haven't been able to stop sniffing my hand, so I'm excited about wearing that. I think I might put that on today after the gym. And then I have a new swap. I just bought or swapped. Um, I now have a bottle of Journey Woman, which I've worn once since I got it. And I've been through a decant before, so I know I really like it. Although it has Osmanthus, which is not my typical style, really. Um, but this particular fragrance is really interesting. It's layered. It's, it's, uh, it's a good amouage. And the bottle is stunning. Um, and that does, I have to admit, affect me a little bit. Okay, those were my, those were my keeps. Um, please keep the comments coming. I'd love to hear your feedback. Do you agree on these? Do you have um, any favorites among these that you've worn? Uh, uh, drop me a line. Bye-bye.